living room. Plus, we will even deliver it anywhere in the state. The service don't stop there. We also have a state-of-the-art service facility and collision repair center. So for all your automotive needs, come see us at Cowboys Chevy GMC in Heber Springs. When it comes to the integrity of your roof, it takes a knowledgeable team to ensure a truss has been properly installed with sturdy materials that will last. Family owned and operated with over 17 years experience, the team at Knapp Trust will provide customizable premium trust installation services at a fair price. Knapp Trust prides themselves on the final product they deliver which will stand the test of time. For quality trusses built to last, contact Knapp Trust at 870-948-2105 to schedule your project estimate today. Since 1954, F.L. Davis Ace has proudly served the Greer's Ferry Lake area by providing the best hardware and home improvement needs to our customers. Stop by one of our six Arkansas locations in Greer's Ferry, Heber Springs, Sherwood, Pea Ridge, Fayetteville, or Centerton, and let us show you why we're more than just a hardware store. We have something for everyone, and you won't believe what we have to offer. Need a new mower? We've got you covered. Need it repaired? No problem. From custom paint matching to the best brands in grilling, F.L. Davis Ace has got it all. We're also home to the Lake Boutique, featuring clothing, footwear, jewelry, accessories, furniture, home decor, gift items, and so much more. Come by and see us today, and let us show you why F.L. Davis Ace is not your typical hardware store. scenario becomes a reality. We offer a variety of coverage options, including personal and commercial insurance, so that your home and business are covered no matter what. Don't settle for less. Experience more savings, more coverage, and more service with American Safeguard Insurance. Roof Tech of Heber Springs is a premier roof replacement company servicing commercial and residential customers in Central Arkansas. They specialize in insurance replacements for all roof types. Licensed, bonded, insured, and A-plus rated with Better Business Bureau and five-star rated customer service. Free inspection and estimates. Check us out on Facebook at Roof Tech of Heber Springs, LLC. Known as one of the best kept secrets for championship golf in Arkansas, Indian Hills Golf Resort is known for its tree-lined fairways, deep bunkers, small slope greens, and the Indian Rock Cave off number 18 fairway. Located in beautiful Fairfield Bay, Indian Hills is an 18-hole championship layout course with four sets of tees for players of all abilities to enjoy the natural surroundings. Tee times fill quickly, so call 501-884-684. 6018 to book yours today. Sutterfield Ready Mix, located in Shirley, and Sutterfield Landscaping Supplies, located in Heber Springs, are family owned and operated, offering a wide variety for all your ready mix and landscaping needs. We offer mulch, topsoil, compost, sand, gravel, landscape rock, SB2 gravel, bee stone, pea gravel, and concrete. Give us a call today at 501-723-4660 for your ready mix needs or 501-294-8494 for 
for all your landscaping needs. Open Monday through Friday. We deliver. Attention Lake Area Senior Athletes, you don't want to miss out on this scholarship opportunity. Lake Area Sports will be giving out two $500 scholarships this year. One male and one female student athlete will receive a one-time $500 scholarship to be used to further your education this fall. Go to the Lake Area Sports Facebook page for more information and to submit your application. the heart of rural Arkansas, where community thrives, there's a bond that ties us together. Petty Gene Fiber. We understand the importance of local relationships. And that's why when it comes to connectivity, our customers deserve the best. Whether working from home, learning remotely, or connecting with loved ones, Petty Gene Fiber delivers more than just high-speed internet. It serves as a gateway to a world filled with limitless possibilities. Petty Gene Fiber. Better internet, better service, better price. Rick's Pawn and Swap Shop is your hometown spot to buy, sell, or trade gold, silver, guns, tools, jewelry, water sports, and a whole lot of fishing gear located at 7560 Edgemont Road in Higdon. Stop by and check out the new inventory at affordable prices. If you're looking for something special, check them out on Facebook or see Nathaniel for any firearms questions. Or you can call 501 270 Five, nine. Test, test, test. Ooh, I'm hot. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. Test, test, test. Can you hear everything okay? Huh? Perfect. Well, good evening, uh, Lake Erie sports fans, and welcome back to Glenn Hackett Fieldhouse on the campus of Shirley High School. Ready to, almost ready to tip things off between the Shirley Lady Blue Devils and the Mayflower Lady Eagles. Okay, I expected the national anthem. Uh, I'm forgetting they had homecoming and they did that earlier, so we're going to go straight into lineups. Number 20, Alyssa Grizzle, starting for Mayflower. Also starting number 23, Haley Francis. Next up for Mayflower, number 24, Riley Whittington. And finally, number 44, Ella York. And also number 30, Olivia Patterson. Has to be the starting lineup. Very large lineup for Mayflower. Mm -hmm. Starting for Shirley, number 22, Miley Newland. Number 11, Akela Rocha. Number 14, Addie Overturf. Number 50, Hunter Hutto. And number 12, Abigail Hensley. Well, tonight I think um, we're going to see Shirley have her hands full. Uh, Mayflower comes in with a record of 9 and 2. Uh, they've got good size. They're a 4A school. So um, definitely going to be... Definitely going to be with a work cut out for them for Shirley, but it's homecoming night here at Shirley. 
and that usually has the players extra fired up so we'll just see how that all that plays out uh, very lucky tonight to have um, Shirley High School Superintendent Aaron Wiggins as my partner in crime. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, good to be back. All right, well, we got the opening tip. Mayflower controls, but then immediately has a turnover. So we will see Shirley get to work here on offense, and um, we're going to see Mayflower come with full court pressure. And Shirley immediately going to have a turnover on their end. So both teams starting out with opening possession turnovers. Mayflower going to go inbounds, baseline, and then the baseline try to pass it inside. It's going to go off the knee of Mayflower. That was off the knee of uh, Kiki Williamson, I believe. Abigail Hensley working here to get it across half court for Shirley. She does into the hands of Myla Newland. It's going to be taken away from her by Ella York. Ella's going to pass it off to Kiki. And Kiki Williamson is going to get the Mayflower Lady Eagles on the board first. Addie Overturf working to get the ball across half court for Shirley. She does. Gets it into the hands of Akela Rocha. And as Rocha's trying to drive, it's knocked away, but she's able to recover it. Akela going to drive, pull up jumper, and the jumper's going to be off the mark, but Akela's going to head to the free throw line. Very quick foul there on Kiki Williamson, which I, I, I was telling you earlier, I think she was just uh, uh, honored for, for scoring her 1,000th point uh, earlier this week, maybe. Or, or last week. I think um, she has had a lot of uh, a lot of minutes. I think she's gotten to play a lot um, in her career at Mayflower, and I think these uh, this Mayflower team has had a lot of success the last couple of years, and so they've gotten to play a lot of ball games. All right, uh, Kayla uh, wasn't able to connect on those free throws. Mayfire went down for a possession, and Shirley was able to defend. So now we see Shirley back at work. Addie Overturf trying to create something, nothing there. And on the shot, they're going to say, Over the back. yeah, they're going to say uh, Hunter Hutto with a push. So that'll be the first personal foul. We got a 30-second timeout here called by Shirley. Okay. Well, I haven't mentioned yet our uh, title sponsor, Petty Jean Fiber. Uh, very appreciative to have them on board as a sponsor for Lake Area Sports. Um, if you live in the Petty Jean Electric Service area, you are eligible for Petty Jean Fiber. I was personally able to get Petty Jean Fiber earlier this year. Uh, game changer at my house as we have no more buffering, uh, no more <laughs> uh, no more um, inability to have more than one device going at the same time. We are able to have multiple devices uh, all operating at the same time at, at just incredibly fast speeds. Mm -hmm. And it sure, it sure is nice. We have it as well. Right? <laughs> yeah. We sure do. Yeah. So very thankful to Petty Jean Fiber for their sponsorship of Lake Area Sports. If you're considering um, making the change to uh, fiber internet, I can certainly recommend Petty Jean Fiber. All right, three-pointer on the way from Mayflower. That is going to hit off the back of the rim, and Akela Rocha there to rebound for Shirley. Quickly, she gets it up to Addy Overturf. Abby tries to go baseline. She's cut off. She's able to get it back out to Hensley and now out to Rocha. Rocha's shot, though, is going to, going to miss off the mark. A rebound Mayflower. There's actually two Mayflower players had a hold of it, and when that um, happens, that's a traveling violation. So that's going to be a turnover back to Shirley. And we are at six minutes to play here in the first half, or the first quarter. <laughs> Oh, nice move, nice yeah. Uh, Miley Newland just made a really good move. Nice aggressive play to the basket. Used the backboard well, and then Mayflower's going to come immediately. I believe that was 23. Yes, uh, Haley Francis 
with a three-point basket from Mayflower. Let me get that up on the board for you. Now we see Addie overturf. Addie's going to work, drive, kick it to Hensley baseline. Hensley decide to pass up the shot. And it just every every time Shirley has the ball in their hands, it's contested. Every mm -hmm. dribble, every pass. Um, very, very well defended by Mayflower. Shirley doing a good job, though, of getting some open looks at the basket um, and, and battling to come up when the ball's knocked away for it to run down and recover those loose balls. Five seconds on the shot clock now. Kayla realizes it, I think. No, no, Shirley didn't realize it. Yeah, shot clock was down that low, and uh, that's going to be a shot clock violation, so Mayflower will get it back. Shirley going to come with some three-quarter court pressure and Mayflower quickly able to bust through that but then a turnover oh nope they're gonna say last touch by Shirley mm -hmm. so Mayflower will get a gift there because uh, I thought Shirley was gonna come up with a turnover on the press Kiki Williams Going to the basket again, not there. She gets her own rebound, and Miley Newland trying to come up with it on the second attempt, and it's going to go out of bounds on Miley. So great job by Hunter uh, Huddle right there to contest she, both those shots. She did. She did a good job of defending both of those. See Mayflower at work. Ella York back over into the hands of Williamson. Uh, oh. This time as Williamson tries to go up, it's uh, Hunter Hutto again defending, but this time Hunter's going to be called with a foul. That's going to be her personal foul. Second personal foul, I should say. We're going to see. We have Addie Overturf, I believe, going to the locker room or in that area. Yeah. So we're going to have a, a sub for her. I don't know. Um, she was holding her hand. I don't know if if maybe she had a, a dislocation or... Or what they are checking on her. In the meantime, we're going to see substitution. Rory Newland going to be coming into the game for Shirley. And Williamson at the free throw line to shoot two. First one up and connects. And she just. She just uh, convincingly made both of those. <laughs> smooth, smooth looking free throws. Shirley is able to get it inbounds, but a Kayla Roche is double teamed. It's knocked out of bounds, but last touch by Mayflower. Shirley will get another chance. We are at 440 in the first. Kayla Rocha, yeah, I was about to say. Um, it's easy for them to keep up with that 10 second uh, time with that shot clock running, and that is exactly. Well, they're going to discuss that and see if the shot clock reset or not. Yeah, but I think Cannon, Brad, Coach Cannon Bradley may have a very good point there. I don't know. I don't know if it reset. They're going to chalk it over, and we'll see what they come up with. And they, uh, they are going to say that that shot clock did not get reset and that, um, so Shirley's going to, Shirley's going to get to take it out of bounds. And immediately going to throw, try to go inbounds there and it's going to be stolen away by Mayflower. We're going to have a foul on Miley Newland right there. Must be something on the court. Yeah. Yeah. Referee's taking the time here to uh, make sure that the, the floor is safe for the players. 
In the meantime, we are going to have um, Alyssa Grizzle at the free throw line for Mayflower. And there's 4.22 to play in the first. Looks like they have um, determined that it is safe to continue on. And that first free throw by Grizzle and a glance off the front of the rim. Second free throw on the way. And that one's going to be too hard off the back of the rim. And that's two, two players trying to go for the rebound there. Um, okay, LaRosha in the mix for Shirley, and they're going to say out of bounds Mayflower. Kayla doing a really good job there of almost posting up to get the ball in bounds as Mayflower's putting a lot of pressure on the inbounds. Shirley gets it inbounds and a foul quickly called. And number 23. Yeah, there. Haley Francis. I'm just trying to, she's all the way at the bottom of my lineups I was looking for. Rocha working off of screens by Hutto down into the hands of Hensley and as she tries to pass it back out to Hutto Mayflower there with the steal a miss on the layup and Abigail Hensley aggressively going down and getting that rebound for Shirley Kayla Rocha trying to come the other way and Kayla's going to be fouled on her drive to the basket number 44 with the foul there Thanks. her first yeah Ella York with the foul Mayflower Kayla Rocha over into the hands of Rory Newland. And Rory Newland, they're going to, they are going to tie the ball up there, and that's going to be alternating possession ball to Shirley. Substitution for Mayflower coming in is, coming maybe back in is Olivia Patterson, I believe, back in the game for Mayflower. Kayla Rocha. At work again, trying to trying to find an opening to the basket, and she finds one. Oh, shot up, and it just misses. But Hunter Hutto with the rebound, she gets it out to the hands of Rory Newland, and Rory shot. Gonna nice. bounce off, and then Mayflower quickly taking advantage of the fast break and getting the layup. I believe that was number 23, um, Haley Francis, that made that basket for Mayflower. I think we have another timeout right there by Shirley. Yeah, it's another 30-second timeout. This time we're going to go ahead and take it with them. We'll be back in 30. remaining here in the first quarter. Shirley uh, Lady Blue Devils hosting the Mayflower Lady Eagles homecoming night here at Shirley. And Mayflower continuing to put the full court pressure on. Going to have another foul on Mayflower right there in the number 14. And that is uh, Ruby Otts who's in the game now for Mayflower. Going to be assessed with her first personal foul. Another, another cleanup. This first quarter is just man. It's just been <laughs> odd, hasn't it? it has it's been, been really odd. As there's just been a lot of fouls and a lot of, of stoppage for something going on on the floor. So it 
it looks like again they have deemed the floor ready to ready to play ball. So here we go again. 306. <laughs> they need first the never ending first quarter. The never ending. <laughs> All right, Akela okay, Rocha. And uh, man, Kayla's double team there, and it's ball's knocked away, but it's going to go out of bounds. Oh, on May 1st, we'll see Shirley get it back again. And down to uh, Kayla Rocha. And as uh, Kayla's trying to, trying to create some offense, turnaround jumper, not there, but Good Abigail rebound. Hensley. Yeah, really nice work by Abigail Hensley, battling for that board. New one trying to drive left. That's cut off. She kicks it back out to Rory New one. Now Kayla Rocha with another spin move inside, and Michaela's going to be fouled. So we'll see. We'll see Rocha head back to the free throw line for Shirley. Olivia Patterson called for the foul, her first personal foul, and it's the fifth team foul on Mayflower. So we'll see Shirley in the bonus the remainder of this first quarter. Kayla Rocha, the free throw line, just not cooperating with the Kayla tonight. There we go. She got that one to fall. Mayflower again. Mm. Push, just pushing the pace. And they just have so many weapons. This time Ruby Ott's with her first basket of the game for Mayflower as they now lead 11 to 3. And again, Mayflower with that pressure going to create another turnover. Uh, Williamson with the ball. Kayla Roche almost able to come up with the steal, but Mayflower recovers. Another drive. This time, uh, mm -hmm. Hunter Hutto with a block. A lot of contact, but no foul called. You see Rocha working for this, uh, looking for the screen and roll, but uh, Newland cut off on the roll and a turnover. Mayflower immediately pushes the, the block and then kicks it back out and on the drive inside. Let me see who that was. That was going to be a foul on AK. Okay, uh, Roach. And that was three, Miranda Leslie, who was fouled, and she'll be the one taking it out of bounds. Here is Mayflower. We'll get a reset. They're going to come inbounds to Ruby Otts. Ruby's going to work inside. Shot off the glass too hard. And Miley Newland with another rebound for Shirley as Miley Newland and Abigail Hensley both doing a really good job on the boards tonight. Hunter Hutto doing a really good job defensively. Cross court pass too hard and that's going to again be another turnover on Shirley. So Mayflower will have it back. Now we're down to 112 to play here in the first quarter. Anaya Delk. She tried to go baseline. I think it was knocked away. Uh, it hit the, the back oh, of the backboard. Oh, did it hit the back of the backboard? Okay. Into the game now for Shirley is Henderson. She's going to be called for the traveling violation there. She got just across half court. Boy, Mayflower, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how many girls have been in the game already and they've had, they've had about 10 and then you haven't seen a, a bit of change in the ability so they are definitely deep shot up from Mayflower not there but rebound by Miranda Leslie now cross court to Delph or, excuse me that's Miranda Leslie just shot off the mark and back on the trolley bench is Addie Overturf uh, looks like just from what I can see, it looks like she's got a taped up thumb. Okay. But not sure exactly what happened there. As Henderson tried to drive inside, Mayflower just ripped it right out of her hands. 
Another baseline drive, another block by Hunter Hutto. Yeah, Hunter yeah. doing such a good job on defense. Just really being a force there. Down to five seconds left now. Roche is shot up to miss, and that's the way the third quarter will end with Mayflower leading 11 to 3. So we'll go ahead and check in with our sponsors. we got to pay some bills. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. Ready to get the second period underway. Of note here at the start of the second period, we got Addie Overturf who went out early in the first quarter with an injury. She's now uh, back, her thumb taped up, and she is back in the lineup for Shirley. Uh, Mayflower with the opening possession of this second quarter. And again, they have yet new players in that we haven't seen yet. This is London Webb in the game for Mayflower. Shot on the way from the corner. That's number 24, Riley Woodington. And her um, shot is off. Long rebound. Mayflower with the rebound. Drive inside. That's Haley Francis. As Haley Francis now has seven points for Mayflower. And Mayflower now able to establish a 10-point lead over Shirley. All right, over turf and Rocha able to get the ball across half court and get Shirley set up here in their offense. Addie over turf trying to drive. She is again going to be fouled as she heads to the basket. So over turf head to charity strike for the first time tonight. And that's a second foul on Kiki Williamson there. Right. And Addie connects on her first free throw. So over to her first point of the game for Shirley. Second shot's on the way. And shooters roll. She gets it as well. Mayflower looking to go inside of Williamson. They're going to kick it back out to York. And this time baseline is uh, London Webb. London's going to be fouled, so we'll see London Webb to the free throw line to the, for the first time. And another foul called. Oh, that's tough. That's another foul called on Hunter Hutto. So three fouls early here in the game for Hunter Hutto. And we're going to see checking in for Hunter is going to be Isadella, Isadora Inns. Who was uh, voted as as, pro, uh, as homecoming queen, queen tonight. Right. Crowned as homecoming queen earlier tonight. Mayflower, a miss on the free throw, rebound. And drive to the basket. Another man, another strong move by Haley Francis. She's doing a great job of just going right down the middle very aggressively. And um, it's working. Mayflower again. Back on offense on another turnover on their press. And this time Mayflower going to throw it away too hard on the pass into the block. So Shirley will have it back. And 
and when they're able to break the press. Rosha on the wing. She's in trouble, but Newland steps up. And as Newland drives to the basket, mm. the ball's going to be knocked away, and they're going to say Newland fouled as she tried to recover the tip. Of course, with the uh, new foul rule this year, fouls reset at the end of the first quarter. So both teams just with one foul each. Quick first step right there by Haley Francis as she is continuing to just uh, aggressively go to the basket and be very successful with it. Shirley barely, with one second left, made it across half court. Rocha open for three. Oh, just a little bit short on that three-pointer. Mayflower looking to quickly push things up. They try to go inside again. And it's going to be tipped away, but last touch by Shirley, so Mayflower. Be taking it out of bounds here under their own basket. Mm -hmm. Travel call right yeah. there. And no, it's just because her feet are so dang quick that mm -hmm. uh, the feet just move a little quicker than the dribble did because Haley Francis has got a great first step. And that time... That's shown tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That time, uh, feet just move faster than the basketball. Shirley, what a good job of breaking the press. Nice pass down inside the ends as ends with her first basket for Shirley. I believe we're going to have her first foul call on Abigail Hensley is what I think. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like you are correct. And we'll see Williamson, Kiki Williamson, back at the free throw line. She's two for two. And now Great three for, shot. Yeah, now three for three. She does have a smooth free throw. And, yeah, four for four now is Williamson from the free throw line. Abigail Hensley did a really good job there of pushing the ball all the way down to the uh, baseline to flatten that defense out. Scramble for it now. Rosha comes up with it. Spins out to Overturf. Overturf trying to go all the way the basket. Spins around and on her jumper she'll be fouled so we'll see Overturf back at the free throw line again here in the second quarter she's two for two on her first trip to the stripe and of note uh, Kiki Williamson now called for her third personal foul so both teams have a player with three fouls each Eddie Overturf three for three now from the free throw line Oh, this one bounces in and out, but they're going to say lane violation, so Addy will have another chance. And this time Addy connects. So four for four. And keeping Shirley within 10. Ooh. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Haley Francis said, uh, not so quick. As she does a step back three-pointer. That's a first, yeah, that's the first three-pointer of the game for either side. We are at 420 left to play here in the first half. Jump ball stays here with Mayflower. They're immediately going to go inside. Well defended by Newland. No jump ball. No. Shirley ball this time. Yeah, Mayflower got it inside. London Webb, good job posting her up and getting a good position. But well defended by Newland. And on the rebound, or on the shot attempt, Newland able to tie it up. And possession arrow favors Shirley. So Kayla Rocha going to bring the ball up again for Shirley. Quickly get it into the hands of... Oh, what a Man. fingertip roll right there by Abby the Overturf. Yeah. Weak side. 
and that's Overturf's first field goal of the game. As she now has six in this quarter. And I think she just picked up maybe yeah, her I first think, foul. I think so too. Yeah, that's correct. Addie Overturf going to be assessed with her first foul. The fourth team foul already for Shirley in this quarter. At the free throw line is Haley Francis. And with a rare miss. She missed both of those free throws. And Overturf gets the ball to Rocha. Pass into Newland, spin move. Mm. Rolls out. Yeah, just rolls out. Francis cross court to, oh, what a tough shot. See that player number 24. Mm -hmm. That was Riley Whittington, her first basket of the game. Newland with the ball and did not see that defender coming up on the back side and will be tied up in that possession error going to favor Mayflower. End of the game now is Tori Barksdale for Mayflower as they just continue to rotate in fresh players. I think that may be everybody. They may have played everybody on that. No, no, no. I think there's a couple on their bench that haven't come in yet. Drive by Whittington. Uh, didn't fall for, but the rebound by Barksdale to give Mayflower another look, but it's knocked away by Miley Newland. And then Miley, a good hustle to run it down in the corner. Now back into the hands of Akela Rocha. Akela trying to split the defenders, knocked away. Delph. An Anaya, I think Anaya Delph comes up with it. And then three point look by Whittington doesn't go, but rebound by Tori Barksdale. And on the second point attempt, Barksdale gonna be fouled. By Addie Overturf, she'll be her second. It's gonna be Overturf second, and also the fifth personal foul. So Shirley has put Mayflower in the bonus for the rest of this first half, which there's two, uh, 223 remaining here in the first half. Barksdale, first free throw, missed. Second one on the way, and good. Steal on the inbounds. Delph with the three-point look. Not there, and Rocha rebounds for Shirley. Ball briefly knocked away, as I mentioned earlier. Wayflower really Toughly just contests every every dribble, every pass, <laughs> every rebound. But Akela Rocha doing a really good job of just keeping a level head and just continuing to just work against the unrelenting pressure that she's facing every every time. And this time, those hands are going to get caught for a foul. Reach in. 24 Whittington, nope, 44 um, Ella York, her second personal foul. So we're going to get it into the hands of Hensley. Hensley drew two defenders and then passed it out to Overturf. It's knocked away and Overturf rebounds inside nice of look. Hensley. Yeah, what a good pass. Really nice assist there with Overturf and the basket by Hensley. And I believe that's Abigail Hensley's first basket of the game for Shirley. We knew this is going to be a tough matchup coming in. Absolutely. But I tell you, it's 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 nice to play these tough non-conference um, because this is the kind of competition we're going to see in conference. You know, we play North Fork. Uh -huh. We play some teams real special that are superb ball teams that, that we want to be able to match up with. Yeah, the only way you get better is to pay, play this kind of competition. That's it. Addie Overturf with the drive inside for Shirley. And that... Uh, AK is going to be called no. for her uh, second foul.
once again shooting because of the five mm -hmm. plus <laughs> yeah. deep house here in the second quarter, second period. I believe that is Miranda Leslie at the line from Mayflower. Mm -hmm. Number three, yeah. That's and this is her first trip to bonus land tonight. And she makes one of two. It's the second one to drop. Mm. Mm, another steal of the pressure just tough and Francis. France is proven to be hard to handle. And another foul on Mayflower. Reach in there is over turf. It's getting Shirley set up in their offense. We're right at a minute left to play here in the first half. It's over turf working. New one trying to come up and set a screen for her. Inside. Nice oh, good pass. Really good job by Rory Newland there finding Henderson open under the basket. Uh, Henderson missed the basket and looks like uh, Mayflower going to come up with it. And of course, with another foul by Shirley, we're going to see Mayflower back at the charity strike. This time it will be uh, Miranda Leslie back at the line. Connects on the first. Second on the way. And shooters roll. That one falls for her as well. Overture continuing to be just closely guarded. And the pressure going to create a turnover as she's called for traveling violation with 34 seconds left to play in the half. So the shot clock is off. And we'll see Mayflower work for the last, last shot here. So we've got 15 seconds left now. Most of the time, most teams get, in, get into their play with about 10 seconds left. Looks like what's going to happen here. And shot on the way. Short. And lots of players running for the rebound. Mayflower comes up with it, but not able to get it off in time. So we'll hit, head into halftime with Mayflower in the lead, 30-13. to 13. We'll be back in about uh, seven minutes with some half-court stats. over a decade. Yeah, we've added three new dealerships. Yep, we got the Jeep Ram dealership in Malvin. And we're selling Fords now. And we've got the all new Toyota franchise. I mean, I was really talking about how much our kids have grown. You know, one thing that hasn't changed, that's the story of our savior, Jesus Christ. And our hope is that you share that story with your friends and family this year. 
Merry Christmas. living room. Plus, we will even deliver it anywhere in the state. The service don't stop there. We also have a state-of-the-art service facility and collision repair center. So for all your automotive needs, come see us at Cowboys Chevy GMC in Heber Springs. When it comes to the integrity of your roof, it takes a knowledgeable team to ensure a truss has been properly installed with sturdy materials that will last. Family owned and operated with over 17 years experience, the team at Knapp Trust will provide customizable premium trust installation services at a fair price. Knapp Trust prides themselves on the final product they deliver which will stand the test of time. For quality trusses built to last, contact Nap Trust at 870-948-2105 to schedule your project estimate today. Since 1954, F.L. Davis Ace has proudly served the Greer's Ferry Lake area by providing the best hardware and home improvement needs to our customers. Stop by one of our six Arkansas locations in Greer's Ferry, Heber Springs, Sherwood, Pea Ridge, Fayetteville, or Centerton, and let us show you why we're more than just a hardware store. We have something for everyone, and you won't believe what we have to offer. Need a new mower? We've got you covered. Need it repaired? No problem. From custom paint matching to the best brands in grilling, F.L. Davis Ace has got it all. We're also home to the Lake Boutique, featuring clothing, footwear, jewelry, accessories, furniture, home decor, gift items, and so much more. Come by and see us today, and let us show you why F.L. Davis Ace is not your typical hardware store. At American Safeguard Insurance, our job is to make sure you understand exactly what you need so you're covered if your worst case scenario becomes a reality. We offer a variety of coverage options, including personal and commercial insurance, so that your home and business are covered no matter what. Don't settle for less. Experience more savings, more coverage, and more service with American Safeguard Insurance. Roof Tech of Heber Springs is a premier roof replacement company servicing commercial and residential customers in Central Arkansas. They specialize in insurance replacements for all roof types. Licensed, bonded, insured, and A-plus rated with Better Business Bureau and 5-star rated customer service. Free inspection and estimates. 
Check us out on Facebook at Roof Tech of Heber Springs, LLC. Known as one of the best kept secrets for championship golf in Arkansas, Indian Hills Golf Resort is known for its tree-lined fairways, deep bunkers, small slope greens, and the Indian Rock Cave off number 18 fairway. Located in beautiful Fairfield Bay, Indian Hills is an 18-hole championship layout course with four sets of tees for players of all abilities to enjoy the natural surroundings. Tee times fill quickly, so call 501-884-6018 to book yours today. Sutterfield Ready Mix, located in Shirley, and Sutterfield Landscaping Supplies, located in Heber Springs, are family-owned and operated, offering a wide variety for all your ready mix and landscaping needs. We offer mulch, Where is my scoreboard? There it is. All right, welcome back. We're ready to get the second half of action underway. Mayflower Lady Eagles leading Shirley 30 to 13. In the first half, we saw Haley Francis have just a breakout half from Mayflower. She has 17 points. Uh, Kiki Williamson also having a really good first half as she has six. For Shirley, Addie Overturf leading all scores with six. All six of those coming in the second quarter. And then Abigail Hensley, uh, Miley Newland, and Isidore Enns with two points each for Shirley. So Shirley with the first uh, possession, start the second half. And then we'll see Akela Rocha immediately go to work offensively, drives in short, but there for the rebound as Hunter Hutto and she uh, um, outward pass to Addie Overturf a little too hard and as Addie tried to run it down at half court she um, had to step into the back court so Mayflower will have the ball immediately go to Williamson inside and Williamson's jump shot going to be a little bit off the mark and we'll see Shirley back at work on offense Kayla Rocha gets it down into the hands of Overturn, cross court, pass, picked off. And there again, <laughs> Haley Francis, as she picks up right where she left off in the first half now with 19 points for Mayflower. Overturn, and another turnover, another pass picked off as Mayflower just continuing to be really tough in the passing lanes. Shot up. That was York with the three-point basket. And she missed, but Mayflower with the rebound. Whittington gets into the corner. Jumper. Another miss. And this time it's going to be out of bounds on Mayflower. So Shirley will get it back. Over turf going to get Rosha in the corner. Rosha quickly said, I've got first one of the few open looks she's had, and she cashes in on it immediately. Another miss by Mayflower. Rebound Shirley. Newland with the rebound. That was a good box out there by Miley. She did a good job. She always does. She's so tough on the boards. Quick foul right there, I believe, on number 24. I think that's her second foul, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they don't have it reflected up on the board, but if I've got my stats right, that is her second personal foul. Another pass picked off. Mayflower just continuing to haunt those passing lanes. Off of Shirley right there, so mm -hmm. staying down here. Mayflower ball. And bounce quickly to the corner. Ella York, and Ella going to miss that. I believe it was a three-point attempt. Shirley, again, struggling with the press, and another turnover. Francis, and into the hands of Whittington, Whittington off the board. 
with her first points of the second half. Taylor Roche is going to get double teamed at half court. Keeps the dribble alive. And a foul going to be called as she tries to get the ball out of her hands. Got it into the hands of Newland at the free throw line. A foul called on Mayflower. There's now the third on number 24. Over turf. The look from the corner. Not there, but rebound Shirley. Over turf now going to drive inside. Can't get it to go. Gets her own rebound. Spins around. And good second effort by Addie Overturf to keep that alive and get the basket for Shirley. Now three-point look. That was York from the top of the key. And York, her first points of the game for Mayflower. So Mayflower has one, two, three, four, five, six in the scoring column. I believe so. Bit of foul right there, number 23 for Mayflower, her second. Team third. Overturf trying to go inside the Hutto, tipped away. But the ball will remain to Shirley. Back into the game for Mayflower, number 30, Olivia Patterson. Drive inside Overturf. Overturf doesn't get that one to fall. Mayflower quickly pushes it up the court. Inside the oh man, uh, Williamson, Kiki Williamson. She's a little off balance, but she's still able to finish. Uh, Kiki's first basket. Oh, what a pass! Oh, Addie Overturf just heads Great up, job. yeah, heads up to get it down to Hunter Hutto on the block for the easy basket. York keeping up now with both uh, both times she's uh, had her hands on it, just drains three-pointer, nothing but net. Foul going to be called on York. She's trying to go for the steal. They just continued to put the pressure, uh, pressure on and be in those passing lanes, and this time called for the foul, and that's going to be her third personal foul. Ball inbounds to Overturf, and Overturf drives inside. Blocking foul going to be called. And that is on Olivia Patterson, number 30. So Overturf. Back to the line. Bounced around there and finally <laughs> fell through. <laughs> it was hard to tell from here if it went in or not. Whoops. Get that scorer up there. There we go. And this one bounces in and out. Mayflower on the run. All the way. And <laughs> Whittington coast to coast there for Mayflower. Shirley trying to go inside, stolen away by Williamson. Williamson's going to go all the way and finish for Mayflower. Timeout, Shirley. Yeah. Full timeout. It is a full timeout, but we haven't had a chance to talk about the things that are going on at Shirley yet, so we're going to keep things here and give you a chance to give us an update. So the biggest thing right now that everybody's looking forward to... <laughs> Christmas break. <laughs> Christmas break. So we do have our semester test coming up this next week uh, there at the high school. And, uh, you know, we go Monday through Thursday this week. Um, we're out for Christmas break from Friday all the way. The students don't come back. The teachers don't come back until the 8th of January. So wow. we have a long break, and we're all ready for it. <laughs> I bet. So we, we got that coming up. And then, of course, when we get back, we're, we're still swinging hard in basketball on the 5th. Of January, so actually before school starts it back, we, we have our games. Um, Pee Wee season's started. In fact, we play tomorrow in Sulphur Rock up by Batesville. 
Uh, wow. So just we, if you're ever bored, <laughs> we can we can find you something to do. We, right. We're and so I, busy. I believe both senior teams are going to be in action over Christmas break at a Berryville tournament. They are the 27th to the 29th, I believe, up in Berryville. Be, um, it's a it's a good gig. We couldn't pass it up. Right. And I I haven't gotten word yet from Lake Area Sports if I'm going to be going up to cover those games. But just follow Lake Area Sports on their social media, and they will post all the games that they're going to be covering uh, to keep you informed. All right. Coming out of the timeout, we're just under three minutes to play as Mayflower just continuing to build on the lead that they have had. And Shirley continuing to try to chip away at it. Overturf drives inside. A lot of contact, no foul. They're going to say it was blocked. And Mayflower going to quickly go inside to Williamson. Another drive by Whittington. Rebound Mayflower and jumper. For number 23 there. Yes, ooh, Haley Francis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As Haley Francis now with, that puts Haley uh, 21. Oh, what a good job anticipating and a, a really athletic move by Kiki Williamson with the steal and then to stay in bounds, keep the balance and stay in bounds. And she's going to say, oh, I'll take that reward for that steal and just go ahead with the pull-up three-point. She connects on it and I believe that's 13 now for Kiki Williamson in her first three-point basket of the ball game. Over turf, three-pointer on the way. Misses, but Miley Newland, who's always looking for that offensive rebound, got it for Shirley. Kayla Rocha drives and puts up a shot. Off the mark, Mayflower. Looking to set up. And that was jumper by Francis, a rare miss. And now Shirley. Going to walk things up. Pace was frantic there for a, a minute or so. And over turf drains this one, man. She was way outside. Fairfield Bay. Fairfield Bay. She shot that ball from Fairfield Bay. And now with the steal coming back down. Uh -huh. Just under a minute to play. Over turf going to drive all the way. And back-to-back nice. -back baskets by Addie Over turf. drive by Whittington and she misses but gets her own rebound puts it back up and in. Whittington now with six points in the uh, third quarter. Eight for the ball game for Whittington. Kayla Rocha going to be trapped again. She splits the defenders. Oh, nice shot. Very good, nice shot. Yeah, good, good passing and, and Hunter Hutto looked real, real smooth there. Uh, about 10 feet out. Another three-point look by Ellie York. She's had the hot hand. Uh, this one, uh, she misses. Overturf with the rebound, but then Mayflower gets it right back, and they get the last shot off before the quarter, but can't connect, and so we will end the third quarter with Mayflower with a commanding lead, 53-28. Uh, to 28. We'll go ahead and get a word from our sponsor. We'll be back in one minute. We are ready to get the fourth and final quarter underway from Shirley Homecoming Night. Mayflower Lady Eagles 
firmly in control of this one at the moment. They're going to immediately look to go in the lane and... Uh, Number 11. Yeah, I just lost her. There it is. Uh, London Webb. London Webb did a really nice job of getting herself in a great position. If you get into that position in the lane, it is hard to stop hard you. Stop. Yeah, and so uh, Newland took a page right out of that playbook and said, I can do that too. And gets the basket from a very similar position on the court for Shirley. It's traded baskets to open the fourth quarter. Drive inside Mayflower, not there. Kiki with a rebound, knocked away by Shirley. And they're going to say off of Mayflower, so Shirley will get the ball back. And Mayflower continuing to pressure, pressure, pressure. Over to pass it, quicker dribble up, and Kayla getting assaulted pretty, <laughs> pretty good there. <laughs> I love the aggression, though, of Mayflower. They, they just get after you on defense, and you just have to appreciate that about a team. Uh, but that's going to lead to a foul from time to time. And uh, just a good hustle foul, though. As a coach, you you got to see your team. You love to see your team working yeah. like that. And we have as many girls with their hands. Yes. You can afford to, to have those fouls. Absolutely. And as a Kayla continuing, uh, bragging on Mayflower's defense, want to brag on a Kayla just continuing to just nose to the grindstone, working, 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 and gets herself to the free throw line with that work ethic. Short on the first one. Another substitution as we have Haley Francis coming back into the game for Mayflower. Did a quick count. I think she's at 21. Man. points for Mayflower tonight. And Kayla connects. Whoops. I marked that on the wrong player. I'll correct it. Nice. Good job of Molly right there. Very tough rebound. Ended up getting the foul. I didn't see what number they caught it on. Yeah, they didn't put it up. That's all right. We'll pick it up um, later on. 6.40 left to play in the ballgame. Roche is going to get it over into the hands of Overturf. Pass off to Hensley. Now to Rocha. And as Rocha tries to drive inside, they're going to say she pinned it on her hip there a little bit. So traveling violation called on Shirley. Riley Whittington gets it over to uh, Francis. Now, I think it's going to be Hunter Hutto's fourth foul, I believe. Ruby Otts with the shot there for Mayflower, and now on the rebound is London Webb. London to the free throw line. They're going to say that is Hutto's fourth. And that first free throw by Webb glanced off the side of the rim. And she connects on the second. Get this score updated at that point. There we go. Finally added it. Nice move there. Out of the over turf. Looked like she was going in with the left hand like she did a while ago. And then quickly turn on dime. <laughs> Easy shot there yeah. to the right. Great looking shot. Yeah, good looking move. 16 points now for Overturf. <laughs> Haley Francis, she passes off to Leslie and then to Whittington and now Francis again. Francis now with 23 for the Lady Eagles. Overturf working. Drive pull-up jumper. That pull-up jumper was off to the right. 
Whittington is continuing to head down straight to the basket. Nothing fancy, but boy, it's effective. Another steal as Mayflower in the passing lane again. Pass off and a block by Overturf. She has it back on defense. Uh, Miranda Leslie with the shot attempt there. Another drive by Francis. Um, that one was a little hard off the backboard. Rocha went to the top of the key to Hutto. And then just a mental mistake as Overturf at pass. Glance off of her shoulder and out of bounds. And we see Francis drive inside and this time kick it out to Leslie. Now back over into the hands of Francis. Whittington shot on the way. Won't go and Kayla Rocha runs the rebound down for Shirley. Hensley basket on the way. Won't go. Newland rebound back to Hensley and Hensley gets a three point play. It's so easy sometimes when you when you look at a game that looks like it's pretty much out of reach. It's easy to kind of start slacking if you're that team that's got the lower score. And I'm, I'm glad to see that that we're still hustling. Yep. We're still going up those rebounds. Yep. Hensley going to finish, finish the three-point play. It's Hensley now with, I think that's five on the night for Hensley. Uh, let's drive by, is by Leslie. And out of bounds on Mayflower. And, and as, a, as a coach, you always try to, you know, see what you can take away from this game. You know, there's a lot of things that hang going our way tonight. But you do take away the fact of, hey, you know what? I know we're better than what we played tonight against a, a, a team that's a great team. But there's some things that you that you build on, you know, the aggressiveness, stay with it, you know, getting to the line. Yeah, this is, you saw there, Hensley just almost came up with the turnover. She knocked that pass, pass down. And Shirley held there on defense with Addie Overturf coming up way with the rebound. Overturf driving inside. And they're going to say foul on the floor before she got to the basket. We're going to have substitutes coming in for Shirley. Crystal Vasquez is going to be checking into the game for the first time. And uh, Mabel Henderson back in the game for Shirley. We're at 3.15 to play. Inbounds, quick shot by Overturf. And rebound by Newland. And as Roche is trying to go to the basket, she's going to be fouled. Foul called on Kaylee Francis, her first personal foul. Rocha at the charity strike. Hits the first of two. Second one off the back of the iron. Leslie takes it all the way. And hits a little running jumper from about Maybe six, eight feet out. Kayla Rocha to Henderson. Wow, oh, good try right there. And that one didn't draw iron, and Newland's over there working, trying to get the rebound, but she fouls on the rebound. Or did they say she was out of bounds? No, they said foul. Yeah. Her third personal. Yeah. 
Francis. Pass inside to uh, Otts. Through the Otts. The jump ball there. Crystal goes in and, and ties it up. Should be Shirley Ball. Our girls got to shape this game off because we got a huge game on Tuesday night here at our place against Westside. Another Eagle. Yeah. Um, just like tonight. <laughs> but uh, we, we've got to stay focused on that game. You know, pass tonight. Right. And that's a big rivalry. Clinton and, or Clinton, Shirley and Westside. And you can see both teams will be fired up and ready to play. Shirley going to be whistled for the foul. Heading to the free throw line, Tori Barksdale. This is going to be caught on Nevaeh Henderson, her second. Third team foul. Barksdale misses the first. Checking in now for Shirley. Um, Isidore ends. Our homecoming queen. Mm -hmm. And also number five, Rory Newland. Barksdale hits the second free throw. And we're under two minutes. Two minute warning if we were in football. That's going to be taken away from Michaela Rocha. Double team at half court and Miranda Lewis able to convert on the fast break for Mayflower. Double team again. Rocha at half court. Rory. Newen. Passed out to Enns. Ends in trouble, and Vasquez goes to help her out. Vasquez is going to drive inside. She took a big first step to get there, but she's fouled as she drove inside. So Vasquez will have a chance to get herself in the scoring column tonight from the line. First one just a little short. Second one, nothing but net. So Crystal Vasquez with her bas first basket for Shirley. Mayflower looking to go inside, now back out. Well off the mark. A lot of contact right there, <laughs> but somehow it's uh, it's out on Shirley. Yeah. And <laughs> no, for, no foul. No blood, no foul. Three-point look from the corner for uh, London Webb. Her teammates were fired up there hoping she could hit that. It's miss out of bounds, and Shirley will have it back. under Just under a minute to play now. Oh, they're going to say moving screen set by Vasquez. She tried to come up and give Rocha some relief as she had just been dogged. All but, night. Yeah, on, uh, on ball <laughs> pressure all night long. And to Vasquez trying to step up to be a good teammate and give her a screen, but they said she moved on the screen. Another three-pointer on the way for um, London Webb. And a miss and a foul. Which will send a Kayla Rocha to the free throw line tonight. Kayla's been in, I believe, every minute of this game tonight. And what a great effort. Yep. And Kayla steps up on that first free throw. And hits both for Shirley. 35 seconds left. And there's just a little over a second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Looks like Mayflower is going to perhaps wind things down here. They try to go in the lane. 
And really good effort by Vasquez and Rory Newland. They almost came up with it defensively. Mayflower gets it back, drives inside. Basket won't go. Rebound. Put back. Still won't go. And that time's going to expire with Mayflower. Coming away victorious. 65 to 40. And once the teams meet up at half court, we will have some final stats for you just as soon as they get done with their prayer at half court. All right, ready to wrap things up here from homecoming night. And your senior girls action. Surely going to fall uh, to the Mayflower Lady Eagles. All right, go ahead and get some halftime stats for you for Shirley. Addie Overturpin double digits with 16. Kayla Rocha close behind with 8. Finishing with 5 is Abigail Hensley. Uh, Hunter Cutto and Miley Newland coming up with 4 points each. Isadora ends on the board with two, and uh, Crystal Vasquez rounded things out with her uh, free throw that she made. Uh, one, two, uh, three players in double figures for Mayflower. Haley Francis is going to lead all scorers tonight as Haley was just consistent across the board, uh, scoring every quarter, and she's going to finish with 23. Uh, next, Kiki Williamson, again, scoring, let's see, she scored in three or four quarters. She finishes the game with 13, and Riley Winnington finishing with 10, as Mayflower just proven to be too tough for Shirley to handle tonight. It was a really good effort by both teams, good game to watch. Um, we'll be back with boys action in about uh, just under seven minutes. And until then, we'll check out our sponsors. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. we will even deliver it anywhere in the state. The service don't stop there. We also have a state-of-the-art service facility and collision repair center. So for all your automotive needs, come see us at Cowboy Chevy GMC in Heber Springs. When it comes to the integrity of your roof, it takes a knowledgeable team to ensure a truss has been properly installed with sturdy materials that will last. Family owned and operated with over 17 years experience, the team at Knapp Trust will provide customizable premium trust installation services at a fair price. Knapp Trust prides themselves on the final product they deliver which will stand the test of time. For quality trusses built to last, contact Nap Trust at 870-948-2105 to schedule your project estimate today. Since 1954, F.L. Davis Ace has proudly served the Greer's Ferry Lake area by providing the best hardware and home improvement needs to our customers. Stop by one of our six Arkansas locations in Greer's Ferry, Heber Springs, Sherwood, Pea Ridge, Fayetteville, or Centerton, and let us show you why we're more than just a hardware store. 
We have something for everyone, and you won't believe what we have to offer. Need a new mower? We've got you covered. Need it repaired? No problem. From custom paint matching to the best brands in grilling, FL Davis Ace has got it all. We're also home to the Lake Boutique, featuring clothing, footwear, jewelry, accessories, furniture, home decor, gift items, and so much more. Come by and see us today and let us show you why FL Davis Ace is not your typical hardware store. scenario becomes a reality. We offer a variety of coverage options, including personal and commercial insurance, so that your home and business are covered no matter what. Don't settle for less. Experience more savings, more coverage, and more service with American Safeguard Insurance. Roof Tech of Heber Springs is a premier roof replacement company servicing commercial and residential customers in Central Arkansas. They specialize in insurance replacements for all roof types. Licensed, bonded, insured, and A-plus rated with Better Business Bureau and 5-star rated customer service. Free inspection and estimates. Check us out on Facebook at Roof Tech of Heber Springs, LLC. Known as one of the best kept secrets for championship golf in Arkansas, Indian Hills Golf Resort is known for its tree-lined fairways, deep bunkers, small sloped greens, and the Indian Rock Cave off number 18 fairway. Located in beautiful Fairfield Bay, Indian Hills is an 18-hole championship layout course with four sets of tees for players of all abilities to enjoy the natural surroundings. Tee times fill quickly, so call 501-884-6018 to book yours today. Sutterfield Ready Mix, located in Shirley, and Sutterfield Landscaping Supplies, located in Heber Springs, are family owned and operated, offering a wide variety for all your ready mix and landscaping needs. We offer mulch, topsoil, compost, sand, gravel, landscape rock, SP2 gravel, bee stone, pea gravel, and concrete. Give us a call today at 501 501- 723-4660 for your ready mix needs or 501-294-8494 for all your landscaping needs. Open Monday through Friday. We deliver. Attention Lake Area Senior Athletes. You don't want to miss out on this scholarship opportunity. Lake Area Sports will be giving out two $500 scholarships this year. One male and one female student athlete will receive a one-time five. All right, time to introduce the starting lineups. We're about ready to get the boys' game underway. Starting for Mayflower. Number zero, Finley Hotit. Number two, Mason Rhodes. Number four, Coben Burton. Number five, Jamon Anderson. And number 55, CJ Clemens. Mayflower comes in with a record of three and four. It's homecoming night here at Shirley High School. Got to see all the ladies in their finery tonight, by the, um, escorted by their handsome um, escorts. They cleaned up nice, didn't they? They did. 
starting for Shirley, number one, J.J. Vasquez. Number 24, Ethan Hensley. Number four, Will Jackson. Taylor Spencer, number two. And number three, Tyler Spencer. Shirley, of course, going to be in their home gray uniforms. Mayflower in their road purple that's trimmed in gold. Ready to get things tipped off here. <laughs> Tip a little off the <laughs> off the <laughs> line and happened again. It, it keeps bumping off of Mayflower's uh, player's arm. This time they got a good tip, and Will Jackson controls for Shirley. And we'll have Tyler Spencer with the ball over to the hands of Vasquez. Now quickly out to Jackson. Jackson three-pointer too hard. And Mayflower with the rebound. C.J. Clemens uh, now out to Mason Rhodes. Back to Clemens, tipped by Jackson. But Clements able to run it down for Mayflower. Shirley going to get the steal. Go the other way is Jackson. And quite a bit of contact. Jackson just tried to get the shot off, thinking that there'd be a foul. None called. But Mayflower going to step out of bounds on the rebound. So Shirley will get the ball back. And they come to Hensley. Now back in the corner to Tyler Spencer. Tyler Spencer looking to work one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to go in the lane, not there. This pass is going to be picked off as Rhodes was in the passing lane. And as Hogan Burton looks to make a move there, they're going to say traveling violation on Burton. So Shirley will get it back. We are just under seven minutes to play, and the score remains tied. Zip to zip. <laughs> Hensley looking to start things off for Shirley. That's um, off the front of the rim, and Rhodes going to rebound. Anderson, Anderson going to drive inside and get the first basket of the game for Mayflower. Jackson with the ball for Shirley out to Vasquez. Vasquez is going to look for the three-pointer off the backboard. Won't go. Hensley in there working for the rebound, but Burton going to come away with it for Mayflower. Burton pass off to Anderson. Now in the post. They went inside to Rhodes, and it's going to be... Nice block by block. JJ. Yeah, good, really good footwork there by JJ to get the block, and on the inbounds, it's going to go into the backcourt, but Mayflower tracks it down, Taylor Spencer so close to coming up with a steal, and instead we're going to have, is that number zero? Number zero. Yeah, Finley Poteet with the basket for Mayflower as they now lead five to nothing. Tyler Spencer gonna go all the way. And Tyler gonna get Shirley on the board. So quick, quick first step, yeah. quick around. Man. Good, good move. Really good job of protecting the ball there as he goes in the lane. Mayflower got him. Oh. Yeah, really good job head fake by Anderson. Then um, well defended by Tyler, was that Tyler called for the foul? That was Tyler called yeah, for the foul. Tyler, but they're going to call a reach-in foul on Tyler. 
as he tried to get the block. Anderson at the free throw line gets the first and the second. Tyler spins working for Shirley. Passes over to Vasquez now to Jackson. Jackson looked to drive and backed it back out. Taylor Spencer. Taylor going to shoot. Rolls off the rim. Mayflower going to quickly work offensively. Now baseline drive. Oh, what a good fake. Great fake. Yeah. Really good job with the head fake by Mason Rhodes to get Taylor Spencer off his feet. Taylor's going to be called for the foul. It's going to be on the floor. So Mayflower will get it back and the shot clock will reset. Inbound to Burton. From the corner won't go. Tyler Spencer. Man, he's skied. Skied for that rebound. Incredible leaping ability by Tyler Spencer. Tyler working. Trying to drive inside. He's cut off. Well defended. Jackson. I'll pass it back off to Spencer. And Spencer, three-point tough shot. Tyler Spencer just finding the will to connect offensively for Shirley. Limits. Pass off to Rhodes. Rhodes jumper. That's a tough shot by Rhodes, and he, he gets that basket for Mayflower. Trying to get the score. There we go. Five and nine. And another basket. That was number four. Number four, Burton. Give me a timeout call by Shirley. I believe a 30 second. 30 second timeout. So I'll go ahead and mention our title sponsor, Petty Jean Fiber. Petty Jean uh, Fiber Internet now available in the Petty Jean Electric service area. So if you're on Petty Jean Electric, you should have fiber available for you now. Uh, from the time I made the first call until my fiber was operational was about 10 days. So if you're considering it and you think, hey, can I have fiber by Christmas? The answer is maybe. maybe. Give them a call. <laughs> Give them a call. Worth we're, getting, a shot. we're getting really close, but I'm just saying, you could definitely have it by the end of the year. Um, incredible speeds, no buffering, no, no lagging. You won't be disappointed with Petty Jean Fiber Internet. Coming out of the timeout, we're 344. Remaining in the first quarter. Taylor Spencer working over into the hands of Tyler Spencer. And Tyler on the screen. Tyler going to be fouled. Of course, we're sitting over on the Mayflower side, and they're disagreeing with that call, as I'm sure you can hear it through my microphone. But um, I absolutely think that was the right call. The only thing that was done wrong there was Taylor needs to fall down <laughs> to, uh, so that it's obvious. And Taylor immediately going to go work on offense and is going to get the basket and one. So Taylor ahead to the free throw line. Fell on number zero, his first. Right, and then Poteet with his first foul. Team foul number two. And Taylor finishes, and that cuts the lead to three. Clements, got a, nice first, got a first step. Uh, Coben Burton. Coben Burton connects for Mayflower. That's the fourth point for Burton. Looks like his tip yeah, right there. that was a tip as uh, Clements got those long arms up. Clements also with really good leaping ability. Lemons looking for three. Off the back of the rim. Rebound. Tyler Spencer. Tyler on the run. And Tyler finishes. And Tyler had a defender right there all the way. And he goes all the way to the basket. Back to a three-point 
lead for Mayflower. Really good backdoor cut by Clements, but Jackson smartly defended it. Gets the steal for Shirley. Tyler tries to get the pass off to Hensley, but it's tipped away. And Clements, again, going to have it for Mayflower. This is Poteet pull up. Pull up three corner, but by Poteet is off. Long rebound went out of bounds. We're going to have uh, Mason Rhodes checking back in for Mayflower. And we have 2.03 left to play in the opening quarter. Taylor Spencer to Tyler Spencer. Now to Jack, or to Vasquez. Vasquez. Way out there. Yeah. Federal Bay, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we're all tied up with 1.46 left to play in the first. Ooh. And what a first step, Burton. Great first step. Burton now with six points already in the first quarter. Taylor Spencer. Taylor dumps it inside. Tries to dump it inside to Hensley. Knocked away. Clements. Clements just everywhere on defense. Shirley will retain. Going to go inside. Jackson tip in. Nice play. Boy, what a great pass. What a great cut. It only works if you can jump as high as they Yeah, right. With me trying to run it, not so much. <laughs> Another, you see that first fast, uh, that fast first step again by uh, Burton. This one doesn't connect, but they fly with the rebound. Baseline drive. They kick it back out to Burton. Burton connects 4-3. Burton now with nine here at the opening quarter. Vasquez pass off. Tyler Spencer. Tyler to Taylor. Now Taylor back to Tyler. Tyler back to Taylor. Oh, Taylor trying to dump it off baseline to Hensley. Yeah, really good thought. Just not on the same page right there, but good thought. Even though it didn't work right there, I guarantee you there's going to be another play like that yeah, tonight. And this time, you know, Hensley will be right mm -hmm. there. Uh, it's going to be a good pass. Man, and we, they sure are exciting yeah, to watch. 27 seconds left to play here in the first quarter, and I fully expect we'll see Mayflower work this down to the final second. Rhodes. Oh. Nice block. Yeah, really, Jackson. What an effort getting back. And Hensley, oh. Man, Hensley, just incredible effort on the court to try to come up with that rebound. And they're going to say traveling violation on Hensley. And so Mayflower with eight seconds will work. Shot up for Mayflower. Not there. Rebound. Put it back up. Still not there. Tip. And they got the tip at the buzzer. Number 12. Number 12, Kelsey. Kelsey Borns. I'm going to go with Borns. So, fast and furious first quarter as uh, Mayflower going to finish in the lead. I'm out of words here, so I'm trying to get everything added up. Uh, 20 to 15. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this um, scholarship information pulled back up. Excited about this scholarship opportunity for our Lake Area Sports um, athletes. Area senior athletes, you don't want to miss out on this scholarship opportunity. Lake Area Sports will be giving out two $500 scholarships this year. One male and one female student athlete will receive a one-time $500 scholarship to be used to further your education this fall. Go to the Lake Area Sports Facebook page for more information and to submit your application. Sorry about that, I almost didn't get you back in time. 
Mayfly with this opening possession. Quick look. For three by Cockerham. And Taylor Spencer now driving all the uh, way. Move. I mean, Tyler Spencer. I said Taylor, but it was Tyler. Rhodes working for right uh, trying to go uh, baseline or a backdoor cut to Cockerman. Shirley able to stop that play and get the ball back. Vasquez again. I think this one was further out than the first one. Man. Definitely a Purple Bay this one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the Cleveland County side of Purple Bay. Vasquez just looking confident when he gets the ball in his hands. And get a good look. Traveling violation will be called there on Mayflower. So Shirley will have it back. And things all tied up. They'll be looking to get the lead. Take the first lead right here. Vasquez to Jackson. Jackson three-pointer does not go and Mayflower Poteet with the rebound pull-up jumper and Poteet with his first basket of the second quarter. Shirley quickly up the court. Jackson tough shot off the board. Shirley can't come up with it, but a steal by Tyler Spencer. And as Tyler tries to go baseline, it's stolen away. And Borns out to Poti. Poti misses, and Taylor Spencer with the rebound for Shirley. Taylor in to go all the way. Acrobatic move, and Taylor Spencer. Just amazing. Yeah. With the basket for Shirley. Steal by Tyler Spencer. And a foul going to be called on Mayflower. Love the effort there by both teams. Fouls caught on number zero there, his second. Mm -hmm. Finley Poteet with his second. First team foul in the second. With 5.46 remaining in the second quarter. Things are still all tied up. Vasquez feeling it again. A little short. Oh, I thought he was going to get the roll. Right, foul right here on uh, Gabe Bradford over the back. Gabe Bradford in the uh, game for the first time for Shirley, and he's called for the foul. First team foul for Shirley this quarter. Burton at work here, ball over to Bedford. Linux with it. Back to Burton. Burton drives two big steps. Burton gets all the way to the basket as he now in double digits with 11. Tyler Spencer off the screen by Gabe Bradford. Passes it off to Jackson. Taylor Spencer going to drive again. Dump it off to Bradford. Block. Anderson. Oh, what a pass. Oh, good job by Bradford getting back to defend. Mayflower going to get the rebound, and on the second look, that's going to be Pirtle. He's fouled, so Pirtle will head to the free throw line. So you get foul on uh, Gabe Bradford right here. Looks like we're going to have a substitution of Ethan Hensley coming back in for him after this shot. Smooth free throw there by Pirtle. Nice high arching free throw. 
It's kind of a weird looking free throw there. Um, it sounded like you know it was some it was some of our students there that was that whistling. Was whistling. It sounds like a whistle. It yeah. sounds like a whistle, and he he stopped like he, almost needed to shoot it. He hesitated, but, um, but it didn't affect him. Yeah, no, <laughs> both two smooth free throws uh, by Purtle. We do have Ethan Hensley back in the game for Shirley. Tyler Spencer over to Jackson. Taylor Spencer. Taylor going to drive in the lane. And as he tries to pass it over his head to Hensley, the long arms of C.J. Clemens. Basket attempt by Mayflower. No good. Rebound Shirley. In the corner to Jackson. He just hadn't found his range yet. Just, just a little. Right, yeah, right off the back of the rim. So close. It looked good from here. CJ Clements, jumper by Mayflower. Clements misses. And now Taylor Spencer. Taylor just continuing to work, 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 work. And gets to the basket. That's now nine points for Taylor Spencer. From the corner. Three-point basket by Rainey. That's his first basket for Mayflower. Jackson to Vasquez. His last two by Vasquez have been a little more contested, and both of them have been just a tiny bit short. Burton drives jumper, won't go. Taylor Spencer rebounds for Shirley. Taylor off to Jackson. Tipped to Taylor Spencer. And Taylor, yeah, Taylor going to be called with a foul there as he tries to get his own rebound. He wanted that one back. Yes. He just wanted it back. And into the game now for the first time is Cannon Lassiter as he checks in to give Taylor Spencer a quick breather. Mayflower going to walk it up. So we have Burton. It's ball for Mayflower. Over to Clemens. Inside. To Clemens. Clemens gets the and one. Clemens just hard to handle. Yes. He's, he's a threat everywhere on the court. Clemens free throw. Ooh, I'm waiting to see what the call is. Okay, free throw's good, and they're going to say a foul on Shirley. A push on the rebound, so. That's two quick fouls yeah. on Will Jackson. Trying to see. Okay, got the free throw recorded. And that should be that should be shooting. Yes. That will send um, Clements. I didn't realize it was Clements that got fouled. Uh, that will send Clements back to the free throw line. And Clements. I'm not sure. First. I'm not sure how he would get fouled from the guy on the block, and he's the one that was shooting the ball to begin with. Yeah, but, I, I, but he's the guy that's there. Yeah. And that's why. <laughs> he is, uh, he's, he's quick and efficient at the free throw line. And that now puts Mayflower up to a 10-point lead. So just a big swing in momentum. The last minute. Tyler Spencer trying to create offense for Shirley. And he does just that. As he tucks under the defense and gets a layup. Cameron Bedford. Uh, Bedford misses and then a rebound. And I Maybe that violation. was Bedford on the rebound that was called for the traveling violation. I'm not sure. I lost my player number there briefly. So we are right at two minutes to play here in the first half. Tyler Spencer 
with the ball. And as Cameron Bedford fought over the screen to defend, he's called for the foul. Tyler Spencer for Shirley Drives, kicks it off Taylor Spencer. Um, missed, but Lasseter working, right yeah, there. working, trying with to get the rebound, but he falls out of bounds, and so Mayflower gets it back. 140 to play in the first half. Inside they go. Good hustle. Good hustle. Hensley. Spin move by Taylor Spencer, and he's fouled. Man, Ethan Hensley got in there and banged for that rebound. That was a number 22 there for Mayflower, his first third team foul in the second period. All right, and that is Luke Rainey. That foul was called on. Drive inside by Taylor Spencer. I think one player got a clean block, but another player fouled as there was, I think there was three people defending him there, so. Yeah, foul called on five. Right. So 14 foul. That is Jamon Anderson, and that's his first personal. Oh, Taylor Spencer with a rare miss at the free throw line. Taylor connects on the second. Mayflower quickly around the horn. Rhodes down in the corner to Clements and back out to Burton. Clements back to Burton. Burton drives inside, loses it briefly, but still gets the shot off. And this is a Taylor Spencer with the rebound for Shirley. 45 seconds to go. And Taylor, as he's trying to drive inside, they're going to set a foul on the floor. But that is still going to be the fifth uh, team foul, so we'll see Taylor back with the charity strap. Foul call number two is first. Mason Rhodes for Mayflower on the foul. Wish on the first one. In the last couple of years of watching these boys play, one thing I say about Taylor and Tyler, one thing they're very good at when they have the ball is taking themselves into the defender to draw that foul. Yep. It takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of acting sometimes. <laughs> right. Uh, so not to get the foul caught on you. <laughs> right. They do a great job at it. Let's get up. That was a shot by Cameron Bedford. So we can hold for the last shot right here. 25 seconds left to play in the half. And Tyler Spencer going to get things set up how he wants it. Have the ability to cut it to a three point. Yeah, With a three pointer, it could be a two point. Yeah. A two point lead. He's going to get a kick it out to Taylor Spencer. Taylor, oh, rims out, won't go. Hensley tries to tip it back in. And Hensley, uh, that tip in won't go back. T Hensley uh, had some contact to the face. I think you know how it is when you get hit in the nose. Mm -hmm. And it'll just, um, it'll just almost blind you for a minute. And uh, they're tending to Hensley. Uh, we'll go ahead and head into halftime. We'll be back with some stats about one minute before halftime. So we'll see in about, let me see how much time they're going to put up. I think they did eight minute half in the girls game. So I bet yep. they'll do the same. We'll be back in about eight minutes. Thanks for watching Lake Erie Sports.
In the heart of rural Arkansas, where community thrives, there's a bond that ties us together. Petty Gene Fiber. We understand the importance of local relationships. And that's why when it comes to connectivity, our customers deserve the best. Whether working from home, learning remotely, or connecting with loved ones, Petty Gene Fiber delivers more than just high-speed internet. It serves as a gateway to a world filled with limitless possibilities. Petty Gene Fiber. Better internet, better service, better price. Rick's Pawn and Swap Shop is your hometown spot to buy, sell, or trade. Gold, silver, guns, tools, jewelry, water sports, and a whole lot of fishing gear located at 7560 Edgemont Road in Higdon. Stop by and check out the new inventory at affordable prices. If you're looking for something special, check them out on Facebook or see Nathaniel for any firearms questions. Or you can call 501-270-5969. A lot has changed over a decade. Yeah, we've added three new dealerships. Yep, we got the Jeep Ram dealership in Malvin. And we're selling Fords now. And we've got the all new Toyota franchise. I mean, I was really talking about how much our kids have grown. You know, one thing that hasn't changed, that's the story of our savior, Jesus Christ. And our hope is that you share that story with your friends and family this year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We will even deliver it anywhere in the state. The service don't stop there. We also have a state-of-the-art service facility and collision repair center. So for all your automotive needs, come see us at Cowboys Chevy GMC in Heber Springs.
When it comes to the integrity of your roof, it takes a knowledgeable team to ensure a truss has been properly installed with sturdy materials that will last. Family owned and operated with over 17 years experience, the team at Knapp Trust will provide customizable premium trust installation services at a fair price. Knapp Trust prides themselves on the final product they deliver which will stand the test of time. For quality trusses built to last, contact Knapp Trust at 870-948-2105 to schedule your project estimate today. Since 1954, F.L. Davis Ace has proudly served the Greer's Ferry Lake area by providing the best hardware and home improvement needs to our customers. Stop by one of our six Arkansas locations in Greer's Ferry, Heber Springs, Sherwood, Pea Ridge, Fayetteville, or Centerton, and let us show you why we're more than just a hardware store. We have something for everyone, and you won't believe what we have to offer. Need a new mower? We've got you covered. Need it repaired? No problem. From custom paint matching to the best brands in grilling, F.L. Davis Ace has got it all. We're also home to the Lake Boutique, featuring clothing, footwear, jewelry, accessories, furniture, home decor, gift items, and so much more. Come by and see us today, and let us show you why F.L. Davis Ace is not your typical hardware store. Sorry, that halftime went by so fast. I'm always in trouble when I go visit with my mom at halftime because I don't get back over here. Whew, and I'm out of breath now from having to run up the stairs. Yeah, I saw too much as well. I just, yeah. Yeah. Mayflower come to uh, back to work quickly. Rhodes as they strike early here in the third quarter. All right, halftime stats. I promise you I'd have some, I believe. Taylor Spencer and Tyler Spencer. Tied up, leading Charlie with 12 points each. Rounding out the scoring, uh, JJ Vasquez, I believe, three, and Will Jackson, two. Or, excuse me, I think JJ Vasquez has six. As he's hit two three pointers. Pass, they're going to be knocked away. And Burton going to pass it out on a flashing. Poteet goes to the basket and he's going to be fouled. Uh, for Mayflower, uh, Burton with 11 and a lot of players scoring. So uh, Poteet with five, Mason Rhodes with two, Jamon Anderson with four, Kelsey Bonds with two, uh, Luke Ramey with three, and Pirtle with two, and then Clemens with five. So a lot of people spreading the love around his Mayflower. Poteet makes one of two. And Shirley defends there. Tyler Spencer on the run, knocked away. On the floor is Poteet to pick it up for Mayflower, and now a traveling violation. Going to be called on Clemens. And a quick note right here, um, that last foul that was called against Shirley right there was on uh, Taylor Spencer, and that's his third. Ooh, okay. So so that's he's a little bit of foul trouble right there. That out. We'll have to keep an eye on Taylor. Vasquez looking to work one on one. Goes inside. Oh, tough nice. shot. And Vasquez converts on that. Spin move. Burton and Jay, uh, Will Jackson rebounding for Shirley. Taylor Spencer out to Jackson. Three-pointer off. Oh. 
Taylor Spencer trying to knock the ball away, but it's out of bounds on Shirley. So we are six minutes left here in the third quarter. But Shirley trailing by six. This has been such a fun game to watch so far. It has guys. been. Petite, uh, Petite over to Clemens. Now, shot on the way. Rhodes around and in. Yeah, Rhodes. For Mayflower. And this time Tyler Spencer driving to the basket. Tyler's going to be fouled. In the quarter, on number 55. So that is CJ oh, Cullen. Oh, no, they, number two. I could have swore he, he held up like 55. This <laughs> 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 Mason Rhodes, number two. And Tyler Spencer effective on that first free throw. And the second. How's that now? I believe Tyler Spencer with 14 for Shirley. Clements in the corner to mm, 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 Rhodes. And now Poteet going to drive in. But they're going to say traveling violation on his way to the basket. And that was caused uh, by one of the Spencer boys reaching in. Um, and it just caused him to blink a little bit mm -hmm. and turn the ball over. Tyler looking to connect quickly for Shirley. Mayflower with the rebound on the miss. Rhodes in the corner to uh, Burton. And now jump on the way off. Ethan Hensley. Really nice block out. Nice block out by Ethan Hensley. Taylor Spencer steps up. Oh, he was right on the mark, just a little short. And rebound by Anderson. Look by Burton there. Won't go, but Burton able to come up with his own rebound. Rhodes. As Anderson drives inside. And Anderson is going to finish. Good work by Hensley defending on that, but Anderson able to score over him quickly up to Poteet. And he passes baseline. And as they Poteet, sure. uh, Poteet, Poteet and Rhodes overpassing and I must have missed a point somewhere. They've got 42 on the basket. Jackson connects for Shirley. Shirley just will not go away. Burton out to coach, or excuse me, um, Cochran. Clements, Clements drive, pull up jumper. Won't go, Hensley there for the rebound. Taylor Spencer is trying to drive inside, nowhere to go, kicks it back out, stolen away, all the way is Rhodes. Six points now in the quarter for Rhodes. Jackson gets it over to Vasquez. Tyler Spencer. Three point basket, Tyler Spencer. I believe that is 17 now for Tyler. Jackson with the rebound for Shirley. And Tyler Spencer on the move. Does it go? Break for Mayflower. And they finish with Rhodes at the end of that fast break. Back to a seven point lead right here for Mayflower. Yeah. And Rhodes now in double digits with 10 for Mayflowers. He has eight points in the third quarter. Oh, what a pass. Great looking pass right yeah. there. Great cut by Hensley. Great pass by Tyler Spencer. And a block called out of bounds on Mayflower. 
And so Shirley will have it back. 20 seconds still on the shot clock, so plenty of time still to work. Inbounds, Hensley blocked it in. Blocked by Shirley as Jackson gets back. Now going to cut on Mayflower right here. Right. On number five. As everybody's kind of talking, uh, yeah. Taylor Spencer says, hey, there's a ball game going on. I'm going to the hoop. Taylor fouled on his way to the basket. Third foul, number zero right there. And third team foul. Finley Poteet with his third. Good looking free throw. Taylor Spencer. I believe that's point number 13 for Taylor. And now 14. As he lands both of those free throws uh, attempts for Shirley. We're under two minutes to play in the third. Drive baseline. Kick it back out. Those roads to Poteet. Poteet looking to work into the corner to Rhodes. Cross now to Clemens. Poteet back to. You got Clemens. 10 on the shot clock here. Rhodes going to drive inside. Kick. Stolen away by Taylor Spencer. And Taylor finishes. Nice raindrop. Shirley fans are getting fired up on homecoming night as Shirley has now cut it to three uh, with a chance to tie it up. 125 remaining in the third. Okay, Vasquez out to Jackson. Top of the key and he nails it. Two in a row for Jackson out there. He's warming up. And we're all tied up. 46-46. With just over a minute to play in the third. In the corner, Poteet drives baseline, kicks it to Clemens. It's stolen away. And now Tyler Spencer is on the run for Shirley. Back out to Jackson. He thought about it. He sure did think about it. Tyler Spencer and Tyler's three-pointer going to go long. Clements to the corner, Burroughs. And pull-up jumper. I'm sorry, that's Rhodes with the pull-up jumper. And Rhodes just continuing to be on a tear here in the third quarter. He's got 12 on the game, 10 of those points coming here in the third quarter. 18 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Shirley going to look to... They get a two-point basket here tied up with a three-point basket. They go up by one. Jackson's going to get the look. Oh, um, out, surely. Very wise there. If he'd have made it, we'd all been going, Coach, what are you doing? It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep things right here. And um, anything else going on at, at the Shirley School you need to tell us about or in the Shirley community? So when we come back uh, in, in January, starting on January the 11th, um, we we're going to have a series of three sessions of something that's called the Family Meals Challenge. And so what we're, what we're asking people to do is take the Family Meals Challenge where they join us. We want them to join us here on our campus, uh, go through uh, some information, stuff like that. But regardless, we want to encourage the families to, to lose the technology, sit down with their kid at mealtime, and, and talk to their kids about school, about life, about anything else. And, and we got conversation starters that we can give. 7.3 seconds. You can talk about some basketball over dinner. Oh, yeah. Talk about this one right here. Taylor into Hensley. Oh, it won't go. Good try. Good look. Oh, man. What an incredible quarter. That was a fun quarter of basketball as Bayflower going to finish up leading 48 to 46. And we'll be right back to cover this last quarter of action in about one minute.
at American Safeguard Insurance. Our job is to make sure you understand exactly what you need, so you're covered if your worst case scenario becomes a reality. We offer a variety of coverage options, including personal and commercial insurance, so that your home and business are covered no matter what. Don't settle for less. Experience more savings, more coverage, and more service with American Safeguard Insurance. Roof Tech of Hebrew. We've got one quarter remaining in what has been a fun homecoming game here at Glen Hackett Fieldhouse, Fieldhouse on the campus of Shirley High School. Shirley will have first possession to start the fourth quarter, and we will see Taylor Spencer, Gabe Bradford back in the ball game. Jackson from the corner won't go, and as both Gabe Bradford and uh, Finley Poteet tried to rebound there during this her last touch by Bradford so Mayflower will get their first look on the offensive end here in the final period. They'll go in the corner to Clements and back out to Burton. Lemons Lemons pulls up and nothing there. Tyler Spencer rebounds for Shirley. Tyler, good job handling on, hanging on to the ball there as the double team came when he drove. Again, he drives to the basket, knocked away, but remains Shirley possession. Inside to Jackson, now off to Taylor Spencer. Taylor with the jump shot. And Clements comes out of it for Mayflower. Burton going to get Mayflower set up. Out to Rhodes. Clements in the corner. Poteet for three. Off the back of the rim. And a tip in by Burton. Big athletic move there by Burton to just tip that in with one hand. Jackson gets it to Taylor Spencer. Taylor dumps it off, and Jake Bradford going to get the three-point look as he makes the basket and heads to the line for the and one. His first points of the game gave Bradford, and they couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Foul is called on Mason Rhodes, his third personal. And Bradford completes the three-point play. Six minutes and 30 seconds of work left to do. Ooh, backdoor cut. What a move. What a pass and what a move as Clements gets himself open wide open right underneath the basket. Foul going to be called there on Clements as he's out That's in, the the front foul. Court, yeah, in the front court. Just putting a lot of pressure on. Called for the foul. Good hustle. Guys are going to make sure floor's all dry. It's nice and safe. <laughs> Gotta love that about guys. They cleaned the floor with that towel and then immediately wiped his face. Wiped his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rub a little dirt in it. <laughs> Tyler Spencer inbounds to Vasquez. Vasquez out to Jackson. Tyler going to drive inside, dump it off nice. to Bradford oh. in. Oh, that turn misses the fast plays there for the rebound. And basket won't go for Shirley. Mayflower rebound up the court. Burton in the corner to Clemens. And that won't go. And Tyler Spencer coming away with the rebound for Shirley. As Tyler 
goes to work. It's knocked away from behind by Clemens. And now Clemens kicks it out to Poteet. Another pass in the corner. Burton with the three-pointer. Looks like Shirley's going to call a timeout. Uh, we have five minutes left to play, and Mayflower has crept into a 55 49 lead. It's going to be a full timeout, so we'll take it with them. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. Roof Tech of Heber Springs is a premier roof replacement company servicing commercial and residential customers in central Arkansas. They specialize in insurance replacements for all roof types. Licensed bonded, insured, and A-plus rated with Better Business Bureau and five-star rated customer service. Free inspection and estimates. Check us out on Facebook at Roof Tech of Heber Springs, LLC. Known as one of the best kept secrets for championship golf in Arkansas, Indian Hills Golf Resort is known for its tree-lined fairways, deep bunkers, small slope greens, and the Indian Rock Cave off number 18 fairway. Located in beautiful Fairfield Bay, Indian Hills is an 18-hole championship layout course with four sets of tees for players of all abilities to enjoy the natural surroundings. Tee times fill quickly, so call 501-88. We have the final five minutes to play. Mayflower Eagles on top, 55 to 49. Tyler Spencer with the ball for Shirley. Double screen set for Taylor Spencer. Taylor's basket. Not there, and Mayflower. Mayflower rebounds, and Ray look to get things set up. Clements with the ball for Mayflower into the hands of Anderson. Now out to Poti. Oh, in the lane to Burton. Yeah, just Burton, just a workhorse. I think Burton with 18 on the game for Mayflower. I did a quick math. Not to be outdone, Tyler Spencer on the offensive end for Shirley. No give up in that kid. There's a fourth foul on, on number zero there and third for the team. Right, so Finley Poteet with his fourth personal foul. Tyler Spencer good at the charity stripe. Times two. Corner. Anderson. Anderson doesn't draw iron and they're going to say foul. Well, number two. Oh, uh, no, they cut. See? Here I am again. They go on 54. <laughs> I was on two with the steal there. And that's Clements' third personal foul. Fourth foul on Mayflower. Three forty-six left to play in this ball game. Tyler Spencer going to look to go long. And Tyler hits another three-pointer. I think I had one too many points up for Shirley because they, they on the officials uh, on the scoreboard here they've got 54. So Poteet, yeah, Poteet with a turnaround jumper. Taylor Spencer with the ball for Shirley. That's a Tyler Spencer. Tyler to Jackson. Jackson hits for three. Back to a two-point ball game, I believe. Rhodes now over to uh, Poteet. Clement's going to drive baseline. Kicked it over to Poteet in the corner and now out to uh, Rhodes on the drive. Oh, oh, and, oh Shirley had an opportunity.
opportunity there, but a turnover. So they'll still trail by two with 2.37 left to play in what is, has been a, certainly a fun game to watch. It has been. Burton, Capote, Clemens. Clemens jumping from the free throw line. Clemens. Tyler Spencer going to work for Shirley. Drives inside and he's going to be fouled. I'm not sure they called a foul right there. I think it did just call oh, it out, out of bounds. My bad. I, it, I think it should have been one. <laughs> Kirby gets it inbounds to Vasquez. Vasquez running. Running jumper. And they're going to say foul on Gabe Bradford on the rebound. I believe anyway. Yep. That's going to be Gabe's third personal foul. And it looks like we're going to have... I'm not sure we uh, timeout Mayflower 30 seconds, I believe. 30 second timeout. All right. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes left to play in this one, so I want to uh, go ahead and remind you about our title sponsor, Petty Jean Fiber. If you're looking for fiber internet, I suggest you give Petty Jean Fiber a call. You can find them at pettygenefiber.com on the World Wide Web. And they can hook you up. They um, came out and did a, at my house when they installed it, came out, uh, did a site survey, decided where all the equipment was going to go, were just there for a little while, came back, had the, uh, came back when they said they were going to come back. Like they said they'd be there between 8 and 10, they were there actually a little before 8, had it installed in about 15 minutes, and we were up and running. Um, just in no time. It worked out great. Petty Jean Fiber. Under two minutes to play. Cote to Clements. To Burton. Rhodes. Working it around the horn. Rhodes to Clements in the corner. Good job, wow. Good job on defense. The shot clock is down to about five. And Mayflower trying to go inside. But Gabe Bradford, great defense by Gabe to knock that ball away and give Shirley the chance to cut into this lead. And Tyler Spencer drives. Tyler's going to be going to be fouled. Tyler will try to score from the line. And wisely tries to uh, create that foul so that Shirley can score with the clock stopped. Fourth personal foul on Burton. Tyler one for one. And now two for two. At the free throw line on that trip. He's four for four for in the fourth quarter. One more defensive stop right here. One minute, ten seconds to play. Shirley trailing by two. Rhodes in the lane. Nowhere to go. Kicks it out. Burton with the drive. Shirley holds on defense. Tyler Spencer off nice the goal. Bradford. What a, what a pass. What a pass by Tyler Spencer and Gabe Bradford right where he needs to be to finish. We're all tied up. 40 seconds to play. Burton going to get it out to Anderson. Rhodes trying to drive out to Poteet. Poteet with the ball again. It's on the shot clock. Spin move, and on the pass off, off the leg of Clemens. 15 seconds left. They're all tied up. Right here. All tied up, 15 seconds to go. Man, you got your money working out, folks. And it's certainly going to call a timeout so Coach can set up a play. It'll be, one, it'll be a, a, a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take it with him. We'll be right back. 
Known as one of the best kept secrets for championship golf in Arkansas, Indian Hills Golf Resort is known for its tree-lined fairways, deep bunkers, small sloped greens, and the Indian Rock Cave off number 18 fairway. Located in beautiful Fairfield Bay, Indian Hills is an 18-hole championship layout course with four sets of tees for players of all abilities to enjoy the natural surroundings. Tee times fill quickly, so call 501-884-6018 to book yours today. Sutterfield Ready Mix, located in Shirley, and Sutterfield Landscaping Supplies, located in Heber Springs, are family-owned and operated, offering a wide variety for all your ready mix and landscaping needs. We offer mulch, topsoil, compost, Seven seconds left to play. Home team with the basketball, looking for the big win. <laughs> Inbounds to Tyler Spencer. Five seconds. Three seconds. Tyler with a desperate shot, and we're gonna get, we're gonna head into overtime. 61-61 in regulation. So we will tee things up here in overtime. Yeah. Overtime, the high school rules are four minutes on the clock. So we will have an additional four minutes of basketball to play here. Mayflower on the road at Shirley on homecoming night. Just a great game. Yeah. Just a great game so far. Back and forth. Both players having team, or both teams having players step up in a big way. Uh, Tyler Spencer in double digits uh, with, I think he's got 24. Uh, Taylor Spencer with six, 16. Uh, Vas JJ Vasquez with eight. Uh, Will Jackson with 11. Uh, Gabe, Gabe Bradford big, he had five points in the fourth quarter. All of his five points coming in the fourth quarter, but boy, right when we needed them. Right when we needed them. Yeah, uh, making that three point play. On the other side, um, Let's see, Burton. I believe Burton has got 18 at this point. Uh, Poteet with eight. Uh, Rhodes, I believe, with 12. Uh, Clements, I believe Clements with either nine or 10. So, so many players having a night here tonight. So we'll go back to like it looks like the beginning of the game. We'll go back to a jump. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe this time it won't take three times. <laughs> right back where we started. This is right back where we started from. I'm pretty sure we've been here. <laughs> and this time Mayflower going to control on the tip. And overtime is underway. Immediately you see Burroughs go to Clements baseline and Poteet. Poteet. Connects. So three guys. Three so three. I thought it was, but I just wanted to double check. Sometimes I don't see quite where their feet are. Jackson for Shirley. Out to Tyler Spencer. Bradford coming up to set the screen. Now out to Jackson on the wing. Too hard. Clemens with the rebound for Mayflower. And Mayflower wisely going to get things set up as they did not have the break. Anderson, Clements, now Burton all the way, I mean that was Rhodes, Rhodes continuing to be consistent for Mayflower, just taking whatever's gift to given to him, off the foot of Taylor Spencer, so that's going to be a turnover by Shirley. We can't give up another score right, right. here. We've got to keep yeah, it they've got to hold. Yeah, Shirley's going to have to hold here. It'll be hard to overcome if Mayflower connects again. And they do not. Shirley holds. Gay Bradford with the rebound for Shirley. And Taylor Spencer going to get Shirley set up. Into the hands of Jackson. In the lane to Bradford. Bradford's going to kick it back out. Tyler Spencer 
Another long one for yeah. Kyle Spencer. The confidence you have to have to shoot that again <laughs> with. <laughs> yeah. Lead back to two. Two minutes to play. Hoti looking for Clements inside. It's defended well. Burton gets it to Clements in the corner. Got 10 on the shot clock here. Hoti quickly over. Oh, oh man. Burton. Burton's going to try to get the MVP award tonight. Tyler Spencer trying to work, but it's knocked away. Mayflower on the run. Just couldn't get his feet to stop as he slid in a walk. Traveling violation called. And so we have 124 left. Shirley trailing by five. Nathan Hensley checked back into the game for Gabe Bradford. Shirley. Huge possession yeah, right here. Huge possession. Oh. As Taylor drove to the bucket. They're going to say blocking foul. That's one of those 50 50 calls. It, it is. 50 50 call for sure. Mayflower, coach pleading his case against that call. Not sure what the referees have done. Okay, they're going to need a towel, and a dry towel. I think all the other towels are wet as they are. And again, make sure the floor is safe. And Taylor Spencer waiting patiently at the line for his chance to cut into this five-point lead. We have one minute and nine seconds left in this first overtime. Taylor. Free throw. It's the roll. Taylor leadership connects on the second. Back to a three-point. That's <laughs> a three-point ball game. Rhodes. Burton. Hoteet with it in the corner. Working it around. They get it to Clements. Back to Hoteet. Mayflower does a really good job. Passing. Drive inside. Tyler Spencer defends. Somehow it bounces and stays in bounds. Jackson from the corner. Oh, it connects. And we're tied. Oh, Will Jackson. <laughs> Huge three-pointer from the corner. Trifecta. 22 seconds to play. And we're tied up again. Now this time around, Mayflower has the ball. They can, they can win it right here. Clements. Out to Poteet. Over to Burton. Now Rhodes in the corner. Oh. And they're going to say Vasquez. Oh, that's a smart foul. A smart foul. That's only our second. Yeah. yeah. Of this period. So he's not shooting at this yeah. point. Looks like we got a timeout. We're going to have a full timeout, so we'll take it with them. A great time for you to get to see our sponsors. Sutterfield Ready Mix, located in Shirley, and Sutterfield Landscaping Supplies, located in Heber Springs, are family owned and operated offering a wide variety for all your ready mix and landscaping needs. We offer mulch, topsoil, compost, sand, gravel, landscape rock, SB2 gravel, bee stone, pea gravel, and concrete. Give us a call today at 501-723-4660 for your ready mix needs or 501-294-8494 for all your landscaping needs. Open Monday through Friday. We deliver. 
Attention Lake Area Senior Athletes. You don't want to miss out on this scholarship opportunity. Lake Area Sports will be giving out two $500 scholarships this year. One male and one female student athlete will receive a one-time $500 scholarship to be used to further your education this fall. Welcome back. We have the final 6.6 seconds left in overtime. All tied up. Oh. Open button. I wouldn't expect anybody else Me to make that shot. That is point twenty-three for Burton. Twenty-three points on the night. Burton makes the basket and one. Hits to the free throw line. Three point nine seconds. Miss rebound. Taylor Spencer. Taylor from half court. Oh. What a heartbreaker Man. here on homecoming night is Mayflower. Mayflower going to sneak away with one here as they win in overtime, 71-69. What a wonderful Great game. game. Great game. game. Really fun effort by both teams. Man, we saw some great plays tonight. Some incredible shooting. I know it goes down in the L column for us, but yeah, I tell you, no. it's, it's a win for both teams right here. I think Just so, too. Played lights out tonight. Yeah, really well played. Really well played. And as these teams head to half court for their half court prayer, I'll be right back with some final stats. And what a great game of basketball. You just got to witness. Uh, man, this is what makes high school sports fun right here. A great game tonight. Mayflower on the road at Shirley. Uh, winning 71-69 in overtime. Some incredible individual performances. Coben Burton, what a night for Mayflower. He finishes with 23. Uh, Mason Rhodes in double digits with 14. Finley Poteet finishing with 11. And I believe C.J. Clements finished with 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, Mayflower with 8 players in the scoring column. For Shirley, Tyler Spencer. Uh, the kid is having an incredible year. Mm -hmm. uh, leading the team offensively. Got his thousandth point earlier this season. He had 27 tonight if my math if my math is right, which I know I'm off one basket. I've got it I've got three points extra. So I know somebody's got three points more. But tonight they all deserve three points more. So Tyler Spencer unofficially with 27. Taylor Spencer unofficially with 18. Will Jackson with 14. Uh, Gabe Bradford five coming up big five of uh, those five points in the fourth quarter. Man, proud of this team. J.J. Vasquez finishing with eight. Uh, golly, it was a great game. Fun night of basketball. Homecoming here at Shirley. And uh, time to wrap things up. Shirley, another great game Tuesday night. As if this wasn't fun enough. Uh, cross the lake rival, Gersh Ferry, headed to Shirley on Tuesday night for a conference matchup. So... If you can't be here in person, make sure to check out Lake Area Sports. We'll be bringing you all the action. In the meantime... I'll tell you what. You talked about Tuesday. We need this place packed. Westside is bringing the crowd. We need to have this place packed. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be such a fun atmosphere as we move into the to the Christmas season. So last ball game before Christmas, it's going to be a great night of basketball. Yeah. Thank you so much for helping me out tonight. I appreciate you. Anytime. All right. Great night. That's it, folks.